It sure sound very ambitious, right, for a marine biologist to try bringing back rainforests to the urban area. But um, let me tell you, my story is very, very interesting. So I come from Sarawak. It's a Malaysian part of Borneo. So the island of Borneo is situated here in the tropics. And um, we are very unique because this island has three political boundaries. Um, there is Malaysia, which is our, our part. And um, there's also Indonesia and a little nation of Brunei Darul Salam. And um, another interesting fact about this island is that um, the Wallace's theories of natural selection was inspired by his expedition here in the island. So yeah, now uh, my title is bringing back the rainforest to urban Malaysia because what I am, what our project is doing in this area is that we are cutting down buildings to build more trees. <laughs> it sounds very very fun because. What we did was, we this area, which is called Piasau Nature Reserve, Piasau means coconut. Um, don't ask me why, but we can talk about it later. And um, this area was a residential area, and um, it housed the employees of Shell Oil and Gas Exploration. And, uh, and another thing that is unique about this patch of land is it is a breeding habitat for our iconic prehistoric birds. We, they are called the hornbills. All right, so um, moving on. And in this slide, I, just like, I would like to share just uh, some definition to, uh, about urban forests and urban parks. So um, urban forests is not only about trees in the city, but they are actually the integral part of an infrastructure. And um, urban parks are delineated open space area, mostly dominated by vegetation and water, and generally reserved for public use. So I have pictures here of um, urban parks from various parts of the world. We have Stanley Park in Vancouver, Olymp Olympic Park, Beijing, and our very own Forest Park, and our little park called Piasau Nature Reserve with the size of 220 acres. Now, um, my project in Portland as one of the international fellow is to look in depth into urban forest management and habitat restoration practices. So um, I have my mind set and my goal is to come back and help to improve the management practices in Sarawak and it's gonna start from my park, Piasa. So what I did, um, to, uh, throughout this six months and how what I did to help me achieve this goal. So um, we have various meetings, we have study tours and um, meeting connections with various agencies and through all these meetings I was able to identify and learn the um, integral part of uh, how to manage urban forest park uh, properly. and. Um, most importantly, I was able to identify the restoration process and focus and strategies, as well as uh, methods to enhance breeding habitat of urban wildlife. Because trees in the urban area are so limited, but we also have wildlife populations. So there's, an in need, there's a need for us to help enhance that for this wildlife. And um, also learn about urban forest ecosystem services. And most importantly, I was able to uh, to network with the experts and managers in Pacific Northwest as well as worldwide. And um, with, with, uh, through, with all these processes and meetings and what I learned, I was able to achieve this following item. So most importantly, I was able to work with the Forest Park Conservancy Group, and then they had guided me and also helped me to draft a five-year strategic restoration plan. So we are at the final draft now, and I'm, I'm happy also to report back to my management in the country that I'm bringing back a document to help me to enhance the management of my park. And um, in addition to that, I, I also learned uh, from the initiative here of the Arboris group here that they 
we can we as human we can help and assist uh, um, these cavity nesters to enhance their breeding habitat and how they do it is through um, so and bores and 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 they actually help to build cavity for the birds here so our hornbills are cavity nesters and they and they 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 are they do not create the cavity themselves they depends on the cavity that is already available in the trees but we have limited trees so and we also have limited cavities so how we en can enhance this is we can help to build this cavity for them and also um, in the pipeline we will also establish a nature classroom for the park and with this i hope uh, we can i can help to improve the urban forest parks management practice in sarawak and we're going to start from psl now key points to note um, restoration is always a very challenging task especially in the urban area but once you once you restore an area to achieve the optimum criteria for a very specific species or a focused species, you are automatic, automatically restoring that area to benefit the rest of the wildlife population as well as the community around them. So um, from what I learned here in the Pacific Northwest, uh, most of the restoration area that I went to, they, they restored the area for salmon, salmon breeding habitat. So, the similarity between this project and our project is that we are restoring our place for hornbills. So they require very specific requirement for their habitat. So if we restore according to that requirement, we automatically are also helping the rest of the wildlife. And um, it's very important to note that we need to reconnect human people in the urban area back to the nature because that's our route. We can't stay too far away from it. And lastly, we need to be very engaging. We need to engage with the rest of the stakeholders to help us find a balance between development and natural integrity. So looking ahead for us in Sarawak is that um, we in Piazza, we will implement the five-year strategic restoration plan. And we are also looking in the pipeline of establishing a sister park initiative with Forest Park here in Portland. Um, we look forward to foster and enhance inter-agency relationships, environmental stewardship for PNR through our nature classroom or various organ uh, conservation um, campaign. And lastly, um, we hope that because our project is unique, we hope to attract more funders to help us keep going. And um, this experience and this fellowship has been a great and an amazing journey for me. And with that, I thank the following people, my sponsors, my funders, the World Forestry Centers, and these agencies that have helped me throughout this, um, this fellowship period. And um, lastly, I would say terima kasih. That's how we thank people in Malaysia. And here I leave you with a picture of our hornbills. This is the male hornbill. Uh, we named him Jimmy. And um, this is his partner, Juliet. So um, we, they have a very interesting love story. You, you can ask me later on after this presentation. And I am so glad to share this with you. So for future uh, interaction, um, if, if you are interested to come to my park or even to Malaysia, this is my contact. I, I gladly welcome you to my country. Thank you very much.